I love to sell. We need to look and sound different than the salespeople of the past. We need our customers to understand instinctively that we are about building trust and building a relationship and that we're not in their office for a quick sale so that we can leave and service somebody else. 67% of those people leave because they perceive the company or the people they deal with are indifferent to their needs. I love to grow people. It's my desire that I leave people and leave companies feeling like they want to want to be successful. I think in sales, that we actually have it quite easy because we decide if we're going to be successful or if we're going to fail. I have a pig-headed resistance to mediocrity. I am not a theorist because the nice thing about this is it's not magic. My focus is on results. So you can take it with you for the next few months and win the award in October. There is no cookie cutter approach to sales. My clients come to me for keynotes because they're looking for relevant information to their sales team. Middle of May, I will never forget this because our fiscal year end was June. And so I was in the middle of May trying to get these deals closed and I had about $400,000 worth of license revenue tied up because we were negotiating terms of contract. Price was already dealt with, these were terms. And a tornado came through Fort Worth. Ripped to shreds my customer's headquarters. They found paperwork from these guys' office five miles, 10 miles away. No contract signed, no revenue, no commission, <laughs> practically no customer. So getting tied up in a negotiation for a long period of time can be very dangerous. I always say to, to sales reps, the most dangerous part of the sales cycle is between the time you get verbal confirmation and when the contract is signed. Because anything can happen in there. And you've already spent the commission in your own mind, right? <laughs> You've already renovated your kitchen on that million dollar deal and then the contract doesn't come through. So we have to learn how to speed up that negotiation. After I give a keynote, it's typical for me to receive comments such as, I'm really excited to try these new ideas. I know these things will work. What's different about selling today is that our customers are more educated, have access to more information and want decisions to be made more quickly. They love to negotiate because they love to play the game. In order to achieve the results we want today, we can't continue to sell the way we did yesterday. Everything that I teach and everything that I believe in in sales, I do on a regular basis. My keynotes are designed so that there's a balance between tactical, usable sales information and motivation. We balance that by providing motivation and inspiration so that they can feel that they can achieve lasting and measurable results. So when we put together material for you, what we do is we look at that top 20% and we say, hey, what are they doing? That's so great. So when I build a keynote for a customer, we take the information that we have and that I've researched and customize it to focus in a specific area. The people that you're calling are not expecting your call, by and large. So when you're calling them, you are interrupting them. It's a mindset we have to get into as sales. You have to know that. They're not expecting your call. It would be a very easy job if they were sitting around going, ooh, I can't wait for Pierre to call. I really hope he calls because I really need to buy some more prepaid cards, right? That would make our job easy. <laughs> My clients are not looking for a cookie cutter keynote approach. They're looking for a keynote that will allow their teams to gain immediate information that will help improve their results. For example, if I am working with a telesales organization, I would not necessarily be giving them a keynote on how to manage a long-term account in a face-to-face -face environment. Now, the biggest mistake that I see in sales in the field is that salespeople, when they're preparing to go out to see their customers, spend 80% of their time working on what exactly to say. Some of my customers want the keynote to be focused on negotiation because they're struggling with price discount. If my client comes to me and says, we're being crushed with objections, we may focus that keynote more on how to handle objections. At the end of the day, when you're working with sales teams, my clients demand that it's all about results because that's how they're measured and that's how their sales teams are measured. We ask people, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Um, is it your quota or is it a certain number of customers or is it a certain growth? And then how are we going to get you to get to those results? My role inside a company is to help a sales team to want to want to be successful. And we call that creating environments of success. What we need to be doing is looking at that top group of people and saying, what are they doing? 
What's so different about what they're doing? How can I be like them? And the good news about that is that what we found, thankfully for me, is that what those top 20% of people are doing is not rocket science. It's easy. It's easy stuff. Everybody can do it. I have never met a salesperson who is incapable of performing at that top 20% of performance. Really, it comes down to your willingness and your desire to want to be in that top 20%. When I leave an organization, it's my job to have provided them tools and processes so that they can be successful, and more importantly, that they want to be successful. What we've discovered is we can improve the results of a team and improve the retention of the information that we're teaching from 20% to 80% simply by providing reinforcement tools. What my clients are interested in is ongoing, measurable, and lasting success. After I give a keynote, it's typical for me to receive comments such as, I'm really excited to try these new ideas. I know these things will work. It's great to hear examples and stories of people uh, using your ideas in the field and having great results. And I love that because it inspires me to help people achieve those results. What's more important to me and what I love to hear more are the clients that call me back after they've tried those tips or techniques or behaviors and say, Colleen, I tried what you said and it worked. We have examples of customers who called us and said, you know, Colleen, I tried your voicemail technique and I'm now getting 80% more return calls than I did last month. And it's those big stories that really drive the passion in.